Greetings. In a change to my normal series on science fiction novels, today I'm going to do a short appreciation of one of my favourite science fiction short stories. And the story in question is one called A Work of Art by James Blish. Now the short story format is one that flourished and continues to flourish in the science fiction genre. This is partly due to the early pulp magazine origins, origins of the genre and partly as it enabled authors to quickly explore standalone ideas and concepts without the baggage of a full novel-length exposition around them. And indeed, some of the genre's most beloved narratives have been in collections of short stories, such as the themed robot collections by Isaac Asimov. Now, many of my earliest memories of reading science fiction were in anthologies of short stories, and the story I am talking about today has always stuck in my mind since those days. Now, before I continue, I'd just like to warn you that there will be uh, some mild spoilers ahead, and to also to thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like and share, as it helps a lot. Thank you very much. James Blish was a prolific American author who sadly passed away at the relatively early age of 54 in 1975. He first started publishing stories in the pulp magazines of the 1930s and went on to author hundreds of short stories, novellas and novels, as well as being a reviewer of the works of other authors. His Cities in Flight novels were a particularly early influence on me, but many people will also know him for his Star Trek story adaptations, which began in 1967, and for the original 1970 Star Trek novel Spock Must Die. Uh, now, the short story A Work of Art was first published in the July 1956 issue of Science Fiction Stories. It has been anthologized many, many times, most notably in the 1981 Golden Age of Science Fiction collection, which was edited by Kingsley Amos, which is a fantastic collection uh, if you can find a copy. It's uh, full of absolutely brilliant stories from the 40s, 50s and 60s. Now, set in the year 2161, the society of the time uh, depicted in a work of art has invented the ability to recreate human personalities from the past and insert them into donor bodies, a technique known as mind sculpting. Now, to combat the sterility of the culture of the era, where all music is basically created by artificial intelligence, long deceased composers are resurrected via this mind sculpting. In this case, 20th uh, century composer Richard Strauss. And then they're encouraged to get back to work composing. Now the story follows Strauss as he struggles, quite rightly, with his reanimation, first of all, his alienation with the current day music theory, uh, and his search for old-fashioned composition materials to write on and subjects that would inspire him. Gradually, he begins to write songs again and then composes a full-length opera, which receives a premiere to a packed house. But not all is as it seems, and the story reaches a uh, very different conclusion than you would expect. Now this may appear a straightforward tale of the science fiction trope of reanimation, but it isn't. in fact it's, it's way more than that. It's a philosophical study of what, of what makes an artist, what is art, and, and the sterility that technology can induce, the, the illusion of art, uh, if you will. You know, is the reanimated Strauss the real Strauss? Is anything he creates really art? Who or what are the audience there to celebrate at the premiere? And even if they like what they hear, will Strauss himself like it? I find a lot of hints in this story predicting today's increasingly formulaic and mass-produced by machine music. Blish explores the tensions between technology and art. Do we celebrate the technology or the content? Can a musician exist and prosper outside the rigid conformity of today's corporate music machine? 
And like the audience in the story, is today's audience even capable anymore of determining what is good or just a copy? Now, I can't say much more without revealing uh, too much about the, the ending of the story and the way it goes, but ever since reading this story in the early, early 1970s, it has stayed firmly in my mind when people ask me about, ask me about the most influential science fiction stories I've read. So please uh, seek out a copy, it's in multiple anthologies, and uh, give it a read and see what you think and let me know. Thanks very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this uh, foray into short stories. Uh, Please stay well and remember to look to the future.